Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 1111. We're excited that you have tuned in and are part of each and every uh, Friday that we've been talking about funerals and what to do and how to do it and what not to do and just understanding the whole gamut of uh, funeral directing and just being a part of what funeral directors go through and the questions they would like to answer. Well, today we have Russ Tefner. He's here and he, we, he and I are going to discuss the cost, the pricing. And I know when we talk about the pocketbook, I understand and know that's a very sensitive area. So we're going to be sensitive to your needs, but we're going to help you with this. Uh, Russ is going to talk about the pricing of the different prices of the different services and how you might be able to cut some corners and, and just, just talk to you from his heart about uh, pricing and, and funerals in general. So Russ, uh, I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you introduce it and talk a little bit about it, but I might, inter I might interject some things or interrupt and ask you a question. Is that all right? Well, Gary, that will be fine with me if you do, because I'm not sure how good I'll go here. But we're going to give it a shot. Wanted to talk briefly with everybody this morning about funeral pricing and the different options that you may have <laughs> available to you. Uh, sometimes it can get a little scary when people start thinking about that, because funeral service is a, can be a costly affair. Uh, but there's different ways that you can kind of streamline it and mold it to your own individual or personal, personable desires. Okay, Russ. Okay. Can I ask you a quick sure. question? You ever have anybody just walk in and say, I want the best of it all? We, we have, not very often, <laughs> but we have had I just that wonder, happen. I've always wanted to ask the funeral director sure. that question. And you have to keep in mind, too, Gary, that... It's like when you go out and you buy a car, you know, personal preferences come into that and it also comes into funeral service. Ah. Uh, it's just like if you want to buy a Chevrolet or if you want to buy a Cadillac. Okay. 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 All right. Basically, when you're talking about a traditional funeral service, the average funeral service in America today, not including cemetery costs, run right in the neighborhood of about $7,800. And that's for a complete funeral that has the visitation the evening before, funeral service at the church or the chapel, and then pro progressing to the cemetery for a graveside service. That's going to run you about $7,800, depending upon the, the merchandise that you select. Now, you're saying the uh, visitation before, is that because of the rental of the room? Exactly, exactly. So Be is that why most people are going an hour before doing the visitation? <laughs> that's exactly right, Gary, and that's one of the ways that you can cut down on that cost. Okay. Uh, funeral services basically broke into three components. You have cost for services, you have cost for merchandise, and you have what we call cash advance items. And those are the items that the funeral home pays on behalf of the family to things like the cemetery for opening and closing, right? The, for flowers, for the newspaper notice uh, that goes to the obituary in the paper. Those are cash advance items. Okay. Um, so those are basically the three categories that, that come into play when you're talking about a funeral service. You know, what type of services are we going to do? Are we going to embalm? Are we not going to embalm? Are we going to have visitation, like you said, the evening before, or are we going to have it the same day? There's going to be a difference between the cost of having a visitation during the daytime when the funeral home's already open, as opposed to having the funeral, I mean, a visitation the evening before, you have to have additional staff come in. You have to have the keep the funeral home open. So there's a difference in that cost. So a family can, can realize some savings by choosing to have a daytime visitation as opposed to an, an evening visitation. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you know. Um, embalming, of course, is another one of those items. Embalming is not required by law. It can be a costly component of the total funeral service. 
So a family can decide whether they want to have, if they want the casket to be closed uh, for the funeral service, then embalming may not be required, and they could save money there. Then there's different ways. Another way is to, to save some money is if you wanted to do uh, a graveside service only as opposed to a service in the church or the funeral home chapel. Okay. You know, so those are different ways that a family can can kind of streamline, so to speak. Okay. Um, funeral service, everything, it used to be years and years ago when you would go to a funeral home to make arrangements, you would go into the selection room, there would be a price on the casket, and that price was indicated everything for the whole funeral. Oh. But, okay, but as times have changed, and people want more choices, now funeral homes, everything is itemized. So it's almost like an a la carte menu where you can discuss it with your funeral service provider and go through it and say, well, we want this, we, we don't want that. And that's ways that you can trim things down, if so to speak. Okay. Okay. Merchandise is the second, the second component, and that's where you're talking about your casket, your burial vault, your the printed stationery, guest book, memorial folders, um, and things of that nature. Now, do y'all do provide some jewelry if they want it, right? I'm sorry? Do y'all provide jewelry? We neck? do. We That's do. what I thought. There is so much different merchandise and so many different options when it comes to cremation that you can get jewelry that has a portion of cremated remains in it. Uh -huh. And that's going to, you know, and that can run a, a wide range because you can get it in stainless steel, you can get it in silver, you can get it in gold. So those are all the things that would dictate the, the prices on that. So um, it's almost like, and I, I know I've I'm, I'm got a lot of questions, I'm excited about this part, but it's almost like, you know, they tell you before you go get groceries to eat a big meal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and, and, and then when you won't, you won't buy as much food. Well, I don't know how that relates to a funeral home, but I just thought I'd say that, Russ. No, I think that's that's <laughs> pretty good. I'm not sure how that, that would relate either, but <laughs> that is pretty good. One thing I, I did want to throw out when, when we're talking about pricing <clears throat> with, for funeral service is that I mentioned earlier that the average uh, cost of an adult funeral is around $7,800. But that is funeral home charges. You would also incur cemetery charges. Uh, if you don't have a, a, a cemetery space already, you're going to have to purchase a cemetery lot. You're going to have to pay for opening and closing. You're going to have to pay for a marker or, or monument at the grave site. So you could probably figure probably another four to five thousand dollars in cemetery costs on top. And on top of that, isn't it? True that the vault runs different. It depends on what kind of vault you get. Just like caskets, you can get different types of vaults. It's it's the same thing. What is the vault, though? I'm sorry. What is the vault? The vault is the the outer enclosure that the the casket is placed in in the internment site. Okay. Um, it serves two purposes. Number one, it protects the casket from outside elements, uh, and it also prevents the, the grave from sinking in as time goes by. The weight of the earth, the cemetery, heavy equipment that they use in the cemetery, um, that's the purpose of the vault. From the, sem from the family standpoint, it's to protect that casket. Okay. Okay? But once again, just like caskets, Gary, it's graduated. You could get a Chevrolet or you can get a Cadillac. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Okay. But now, the uh, some of them, uh, I mean, they all are waterproof. Is that true? Or not, not all. Not all are waterproof. Ooh, that's a good okay, question. The bottom one, is, which is the basic grave liner, its main function, it's, it doesn't seal. It's not waterproof. It is going to provide some protection to the casket, but the main purpose of it is to keep the grave from collapsing in. Oh, okay. I never heard this part. This yeah. is it. Okay. Then your next step up would be a burial vault, which when it's manufactured, it's manufactured with a plastic inner liner, and then it has a tongue and groove seal. Okay. And that, tongue, and that groove is filled up with the sealant, so when the lid sits down on the base of that vault, it seals, and it does prevent outside elements from getting in. Okay, cool. 
And that, once again, is a family choice. You have to meet the requirements of the cemetery. Most cemeteries are going to require the basic grave liner, and that's the one that doesn't seal. And the reason that they require it from their standpoint is to keep the grave from sinking in. Okay. Okay. From the family standpoint, do we want to protect that casket? Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, 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 that's really, uh, I've always heard, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, but if it's a misnomer or not, but I always heard that the liner was the most expensive part of a funeral. But that's not true, is it? That's not necessarily true. Okay. No, no. All right. Cemetery costs can, can get, you know, can get high, but it really comes down to on both ends, whether it be the cemetery or it be the funeral home, the merchandise selection is what's really going to determine what the cost of that service is going to be. I can come in and I can buy a $1,200 casket for my loved one, or I can pick out a $4,200 casket for my loved one. The service costs, the, the cost for the using the facility, the cost for the automotive equipment, the funeral service, is going to be the same, but the merchandise is what's going to change it. Is it more expensive on the weekend? No, no. Okay. It, they're, they're, the, the funeral home does not have a, uh, most funeral homes are not going to have any type of surcharge or, or weekend fee, so okay. to speak. People do need to realize, however, that you may run into that at the cemetery. The majority of cemeteries after a certain time on a Saturday, they may have an overtime fee uh, for their guys to, you know, close the grave. So there's probably going to be an overtime fee on the weekend from the cemetery, but not from the funeral home. Well, that's why I heard the other, uh, I did a service about a month ago, and it was on a Saturday, and they said that we needed to be through by 3.30. That's why I heard that That's statement. That's exactly right. That's oh, exactly okay. right. Because a family would have had to pay an extra fee if we'd have been past that time. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Okay. But that was probably a cemetery fee, not the funeral home Okay. Fee. Gotcha. I'm, I'm not really familiar with any funeral home that really has any type of additional charge dependent on what day of the week it is or what, what hour of the day it is. Okay. Funeral homes, of course, as everybody knows, is a, uh, it's kind of a 24-7 uh, situation. And, of course, you can't schedule uh, when you may decide that you're going to go ahead and make that last trip, so to speak. Yep. And so you, the funeral home's not going to penalize somebody because they happen to die in the middle of the night or on a Sunday afternoon. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Well, <clears throat> say a standard funeral... Uh, with the casket and going to the cemetery, doing everything at the funeral home, the standard price versus a cremation standard service. What's the difference? How much are we talking about there? We're talking a pretty good considerable savings. Okay. Cremation falls into s several different categories, uh, but to just answer you right off the bat, an average traditional type funeral um, followed by cremation, it's probably going to be in the neighborhood of around $6,000 as opposed to $7,800. Plus, you do not have the, s the added expense from the cemetery. Right. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about a traditional cremation service, I'm talking about where we go through the embalming process. The, that person is placed in a what we call a rental casket. Mm-hmm. You have a visitation the evening before, you have a funeral service, you have guest books, you have stationery, uh, minister, musicians, and it's the exact same thing. The only difference is instead of at the end of it, we're going to the cemetery, we all go home, and then that person is cremated after that. Okay. Now, okay. on the other end of the cremation spectrum, you have what they call direct cremation. And that's where there's really no service at the funeral home. The family is utilizing the funeral home to perform the cremation, and then they are going to go ahead and have whatever type of service they may want to have or celebration of life, so to speak, 
they're going to do that on their own instead of doing it in a funeral home. Okay. And uh, depending upon the funeral home, the range in that would, would probably be run between $1,500 and $3,000. Okay. So there's a considerable savings. Okay. Is there another type funeral we need to talk about today besides the standard and the cremation? There's, there's really not. There are some other options that have come to light in recent years. Uh, green burial. Um, right. Where it's, it's pretty much, it's very minimal. Um, but that's still, that's going to run you probably in the neighborhood of around anywhere from four to $5,000 with the cemetery cost. Mm. And okay. In, and in, in green burial, uh, everybody's mm. got, you know, the, the saving the planet and everything like that. So there's no embalming. Um, the, the casket is biodegradable. It's placed in a cemetery, which is a natural setting. There's not headstones and markers like we see in the normal cemetery or memorial park. So what I hear you saying is we can cut the cost or add to it by what we add or cut or cut away from the service itself, that, from what you provide as a funeral home and for what the cemetery provides. That is exactly right. The cost of each element, the itemized statement, in other words, is what we're talking about. And that individual price of whatever it is, if it be a vault or if it be flowers, it depends on your taste and what you buy. That's exactly right. That's okay. exactly right. A lot of folks don't realize how many components there really are in a, in a funeral service. And just like you just mentioned, Gary, um, flowers. There's a perfect example right there. Flowers. we got to have flowers. Uh, we're going to put something in the paper. Nowadays, <laughs> the newspapers, an average obituary can, can run up to... Fifteen hundred or five hundred dollars for one day. So what we see a lot of families doing is turning to social media to get the word out, uh, and and just putting a, an abbreviated notice in the newspaper to save money on that end. Wow. So, yeah, I, I and I realized that the paper really went up uh, in the last couple years. It has. It has. It, and it's really a. I think it's a shame. Um, but I, I think, and this is not a prediction, but I think the newspapers are struggling. Uh, years ago, when you got married or engaged or you had an anniversary, the newspapers would run that for free. Okay. You know, it was a kind of a public, public service announcement. Uh, hmm. They would do the same thing with obituaries. You oh, lived okay. in a community, you contributed to that community, you passed away. It was newsworthy. Right. But right. with the advent of the Internet and the years that have, have progressed, um, less and less folks subscribe to the newspaper than they used to. Mm -hmm. And so since less people subscribe to the newspaper, businesses are less likely to advertise in the paper. Right. So the newspapers look for other avenues of income to keep going. And that's when they started charging for obituaries and engagements and those things that we spoke of. Um, and it seems to be, you know, just be going up as time goes by. Uh, but one way that you can save on an obituary is to put an abbreviated one in the paper and then on social media, go to town. And also, uh, y'all as a funeral home give a service there also, right, uh, in letting people know they can go to your website and look at the obituary on your website. Yes, uh, uh, pr practically every single funeral home is going to have that offering where you can direct the, the folks to your website and there'll be the complete obituary on the website. There'll be a place where folks can uh, sign an online guest book. Uh, they could order flowers. Uh, many, many tools are available. And now, that's usually offered... Um, at no cost to the family. Exactly. Yeah. Now, do y'all, uh, I know during COVID, y'all were, people were coming to your website and actually could watch the service online. Is that still going on? It is, it is. Uh, we, most funeral homes, we really had a challenge when uh, COVID came along uh, so that we could inc be inclusive and, and everything. And so funeral homes started to stream the funeral service for folks that couldn't come along. And we still do that. Most funeral homes do that. 
Um, at our funeral home, uh, and I really want to talk about the funeral as a whole, not just focus on our funeral home, but we do not charge for streaming at this time. Okay. You know, uh, some funeral <coughs> homes may, but it would be a mim minimal charge. So as we wrap this up, uh, Russ, and we appreciate all the great information, what is your advice to a family that just lost a loved one and they're coming in and they're planning? Do you have any certain advice to them that they need to put together before their thoughts or whatever before they actually come in and actually talk to Russ about uh, the services for their loved one. I do. I think that it's very important that a family, before they come to the funeral home, that they sit down at the table and talk amongst themselves and kind of get an idea of what direction they want to go, whether it be cremation, whether it's going to be a traditional funeral service. And once they get to the funeral home, the funeral home will, will lay out all their choices. The most important thing, Gary, is to think with your head and not with your heart. Okay. And that's very difficult. Yes. It is very difficult. And that's why a lot of funeral homes, including ours, are kind of talk about pre-planning. Because that's the one time when you're not thinking with your heart. Right. You know. But now the death has occurred. I'm thinking with my heart, it's very easy to overspend, as you know, when you're, when you're doing that. Right. So make sure that you think with your head. So you just used the word that I, I have one more question, and then we're going we're gonna to cut this off here. But is it cheaper in the long run to pre-plan than to, at the time the person passes, that you do the service? Is pre-planning, how much cheaper is that than... Or is it cheaper? Okay. The, the advantage with pre-planning and, and pre-funding okay. would be that you are going to, in a way, lock in what the prices of those services are at today's rate. Okay? Right. So if there is a price increase as time goes on, that will, you will not be subject to those price increases. Okay. Funeral service, when you pre-plan and you, and you pre-fund, there are several different ways you can do that, either by using a trust at a bank or an insurance product. And what, what you hope is that the, the growth on that trust or the increasing death benefit of that insurance product is going to keep up with inflation. So it's, a, it's an insurance product you're purchasing? It is. It's okay. a whole life policy. And it has an increasing death benefit. As time goes by, the death benefit goes up. Now, does the family get uh, any of the death benefit if they don't use it all, or is it just a one-time deal? Nope. If there is, and if that if that growth has grown more than inflation, and there is money left over, the family has the option that it can use that residual money for other items that was not picked at the time or it can be returned right back to the family or to the estate. Wow. So there you go. Now Russ has educated us on the differences in the price and understanding the price. And I hope just in a very special way, even if it's a small way, it's helped you to understand that even if you're planning your own services to get with a funeral home and pre-plan so that your wishes will be fulfilled and the cost will be already covered except a few things. I think it's a few things that isn't covered, uh, the book. and Well, you can always set money aside. You, even in a prearrangement situation, Gary, you can set money aside for uh, the newspaper, for flowers. for You can have it all covered. Okay. There are certain items that won't be guaranteed. Okay. S items that, you know, if, if you say, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set aside three hundred and fifty dollars for a casket spray and then several years go by before that file is revisited and we call the florist and the florist says well that casket spray is now four hundred dollars since that's a, a third party charge then the family would be billed the difference okay okay cool. if it's a funeral home charge and there's a difference the family's not billed for that good okay so any closing remarks, Russ, that you'd like to share with anybody? 
the only thing that I would have to say is when, when you're thinking about doing this, uh, look at all your options, think with your head and not with your heart. Well, there you go. I appreciate you. Thank you, Russ, for coming and being a part, and thank you for tuning in. And, of course, this will be on Facebook, and it will be replayed again, and we appreciate you tuning in, and we appreciate you if you're, if you're re-watching this. And we look forward to next uh, Friday for our 1111. Uh, it'll be, uh, matter of fact, we'll be taking a break next Friday. Uh, Amy and Susan will be doing something next Friday, and then we'll start back the next Friday. So thank you for tuning in, and I hope you have a great weekend, and we appreciate you. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Gary, and everybody have a blessed day.